Hey, it's Dr. Ruth, the manualtherapist.com. I just want to show a quick, uh, the easiest cervical assessment you'll ever do. I'm just trying to save your time so you don't do, you know, the press and guess or the passive invertebral motion. So since you can't really isolate vertebrae, you only want to look at gross osteokinematic motion loss. So as a pattern in clinical practice patterns, what you're going to look at is for unilateral complaints, say you had left shoulder pain, left neck pain, left headaches, left cervical uh, radiculopathy like complaints, it doesn't matter where the complaints are, you're going to look for a loss of the ability to load and side bend that to that side. So typically, again, instead of kind of doing this, where I was classically trained, there's no point in looking at, since you can't isolate the, the segments, why not just look for gross loading loss? So uh, first I would just retract, keep them retracted, and actually he's very limited to the right, and he has pretty good motion to the left. And I didn't even ask, are there any right-sided complaints or shoulder, neck, anything, or just, just limited to the right? No, no, just to the right. Yeah. So in general then, if he were limited um, and that was concurrent with right-sided cervical, shoulder, or arm pain, that's the first thing I would address is the ability of him to go to the right. And I think that is much easier. One way, and I, 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 ask, I ask you to load first, because if they were to remain unloaded, or you're gonna test them in flexion, in flexion, when they're unloaded, the motion looks symmetrical. But your body has to be able to accept load, and in a loaded, retracted position, you'll see that right around here, he'll want to protract, and if he protracts, the motion is full. So if I hold him in load, then the motion stops around there. So I may choose like a, a down glide thrust or some ISTM in the cervical patterns on this side to restore that.